Hi, I'm Miriam Joy and welcome to my studio. Today we're going to be doing the Miriam Joy Wax Technique Jewelry Line. And we're going to do a bunch of different uh, videos for you on different pieces because they all kind of have little techniques. But before we get started on the piece we're working on today, we want to go over some of the tools and how we get the gourd piece ready. So that's kind of important. This that I'm working on is a, a two inch gourd round. And we get these by using our circle drill. And these just simply hook into your drill. You just set them right in there like that. Now, you can position this bit so that it's not in the way, but it's harder to control. So if you're using the bit and you want to leave the drill in the middle, that's fine. And then what I do is I simply fill it in with quick wood and sand it out. Now the slower you take these, the smoother your pieces are going to be. So my suggestion is just take it nice and slow. If you have a drill press, it's easier. You just hook this into the drill press and take the drill press down nice and easy. You want thicker pieces. You don't want something that's really, really thin. It needs to be wide enough that we can put a strip of leather or whatever you want to put on the sides. There's all kinds of different ways to finish it and we'll talk about that when we get to that part. But I do them with thicker pieces and then I take them and I have a um, let's see what is this called? A sanding <laughs> tabletop sander. It's a belt sander and I just smooth my edges down and I've done them by hand too. It's not a big deal. You can do the sizes by hand if you want to make sure that they're nice and perfectly round. And then I take the bottom of it and I just sand it like this. Now because they're thicker I get that nice smooth finish. You can sand the top if you have uh, little brimishes or anything like that. And if you have a little hole or two, don't forget you can fill that in with your quick wood as well. It doesn't take that much. But other than that, these do not have to be sanded. You do not want them sealed. You want them nice and natural. You don't want anything underneath. We're not going to be working with any dyes or anything other than just our Crayola crayon for our color. We will be adding some of that. Now to make this easier for you, we do have the different sizes available on the website. This is a two and a half inch round. And what I work most commonly with is the two inch. I have a one and a half, which is a nice little necklace size or also the one and a quarter and this makes great earrings. I don't want my earrings so small that I can't work with them so we'll be getting some earring kits for you as well. Um, all of these are available on our website as pieces and as kits and we're going to um, Excuse me, lost my train of thought there. Um, we just want to make sure that we have these available so that you don't have to do the work. You can just buy them and you're ready to go. And a lot of our kits are going to have everything you need in it to do that Pacific one. So whatever kit you want, you just order it online and it will have most of your products available in it. So we've talked about how our little pieces are, oh, I know where my train of thought went. I would not recommend doing a bigger piece than the two and a half. You can try it, but most of them, like I said, I like the two inch. The reason is there's only so much room you can control the wax while it's warm. So that's the reason I don't get into the, the bigger pieces of gourds. And you want to kind of watch them. You don't want them too lumpy or bumpy because remember your wax is going to melt into the lower spots. So we want to try and have it as flat as possible. We know that gourds aren't flat, but we try and do our best. Okay. Um, we're going to be using, of course, uh, the Miriam Joy melting pot that has the well in it so we can put our crayons in here. This technique does take a little bit more crayon than what you're used to working with. And I'm not going to lie to you about this, but the more pots you have, 
the better the experience is going to be for you, one for each color. Otherwise, you're trying to jump around too much, trying to clean out the melting pot, getting to the next color. So if you have three melting pots, you might kind of think about doing a project that has just three colors. You can clean it out. It's just going to take you longer, that's all. And you just, the more you have, the more you're going to really love that. And this is addicting. I'm going to warn you up front, it is very addicting. Once you start this, your ideas are just going to go crazy and you're going to start thinking of all these things that you can do. I do use the Miriam Joy tools. When I'm applying the wax on with larger amounts, I use my number two tool, um, which is the biggest of the tools. And then I go into the smaller tools to move things around. So know that they are going to be <coughs> move around on you a little bit um, so you want the smaller tips of the Mary and Joy tools. We use the uh, stipple brushes and I don't even try to clean these out because they're so reasonably cost and I try to keep these all reasonable for you. I have one for each color and this is when we're putting large amounts of color in them and I'll be showing you different um, pieces where we're using this tool to make our process go a whole lot faster and it's time to lay the wax kind of more evenly on there. I've also introduced the eyedroppers. Now we carry these as well. Again, I do the same thing. I try to have one for each color and at a reasonable cost so that you don't have to worry about trying to clean them out or anything. And they have to be glass. You do not want to try and put plastic into your melting pot or your hot wax. You're going to melt it. So we want to make sure that we're using glass eyedroppers. And this, again, is just a, uh, it's a easier way to get the wax spread out along a longer cross of area. So that's the reason that we have start introduced the eyedroppers. I am also going to use the texture brush and inserts in some of the different things I make. And the ones I do that you're really going to like. They're going to be a lot of fun. So make sure you have your texture brush and insert ready for some of these as well. I'm sticking with a lot of these, a 24 box of crayons. This, the, doing these videos or the wax technique is great because you can take out your crayons that you don't use a lot of and just throw them all together and make some wonderful fun stuff. But I'm going to stick with a 24 because that's the most economical as we know. Don't forget your darker colors. Use your white to lighten them exp up, especially your blues and your purples so they don't look black and then you get these real fun colors. Because in, in this the 24 box, we don't really have a lighter purple. And look at the tip, because like this purple here is almost black. I'm also going to be using a lot of the metallic colors, which are a lot of fun. Um, they're really, really just great. They have that sparkle to them, almost like there's glitter in them. And here's a, a silver that's warmed up just to kind of show you the kind of stuff that you're going to get and how fun they are. I'm not using as much of the glitter um, because when you heat them up, they kind of get a little bit, I don't know how to explain it, harder. But try them and see if you like it. If not, go back to your metallic colors. I don't recommend doing a whole bunch of metallic colors in one piece because your crayons give it the brightness that you want and when you're using metallics you kind of lose that brightness and that color so I do one or two metallic colors with a piece at the most and stick with my basic crayons we have all kinds of fun things we can add into our wax as we're working um, there's all kinds of glitters and items I have been using the micro beads and then one of my favorites is the tinsel glitter. And you have thicker glitter and finer glitter. And there's just all kinds of really neat kinds that is out there. There's also, this is like a leafing. I think they call this like a vintage leafing. But there's just all kinds of things. Think about adding to them all kinds of scrapbook 
um, items that you can use in this and we'll show you how to melt it into your wax once we get going. One of my favorite things are these little guys though because when I'm doing this I find I can control it better if I can get my finger in there and I just want to put it on just a little bit and spread it across just with my fingers and I like these little containers better and we are going to sell these on our website with the little glitters in them so you can get exactly what you want and just sprinkle it and get in and out of it with your finger and that again is the tensile glitter so they have all kinds of neat things in them this one I have some of the tensile glitter in I and I have some of the micro beads in but just anywhere where you think that you may need something we can add a little bit of sparkle. This one has just the real fine silver in it. And then I want to show you on this one we have a little bit of the bigger pieces in it. Just, just a tad, just enough to set that piece off. But I really think that the glitter really makes or breaks your piece. I think it's a lot of fun. And let's get started because this is going to be so much fun. I got so excited about getting ready to play. I forgot a couple of the key um, things that we're using here. So I'm going to go back and just cover a couple other little things. You might have seen these sitting on the table. These are my rubber gloves and they're also, they call them garden gloves, but you want the ones with the rubber on them. This is kind of a tip I'm going to give you. These make holding onto your gourd so much easier. So if you have a gourd or you're working with a gourd, especially when I'm working with my drill press and I need to hold on to one, I can hold on to it nice and e or easy and it doesn't slip around as much. I also use it when I'm working with my pieces to hold on to that are smaller because they're just that much more secure or especially when I am sanding on my sander I can hold on to it with a better grip so any of the gloves with the rubber work really really well no matter what type of gourd work you're doing those are fun to use. I also have my table covered in a piece of paper. Um, you can get the bigger pieces of paper at your newspaper, the leftover rolls, or at a butcher a lot of times we'll have the bigger strips of paper. Because we're moving so fast and working so fast, we'll get a lot of wax spread out so we don't want to do um, have splatters all over our work area. I also have a, a black tray, especially right under where I have my heat gun, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Because you're going to have splatters coming off and going different areas, you want to kind of contain that bitter, bigger splatter area there. I also have a hook, kind of a shepherd's hook uh, or a plant hanger. And this one happens to hook right onto my table. I found this one at a craft store, but also your garden supplies. And if you happen to be one of the ones that has a rotary tools that has the hanger to hang off of, that would work really, really nicely as well. And I know that there are some vendors out there that do sell those. Um, you might try to check like Bonnie Gibson site or some of the others as well. I'm going to be using one of the most important tools today is our heat tool. They're also called embossing tools or heat guns. So if you have any of those three written on it, it's all um, good. We do now carry this style and I really like this style because it comes in here at the middle and it's easy to hold. And when I first started doing this process, I would work with this hand and hold with this hand and it's a little bit harder so that's why I recommend the the stand but you can do it if you need to um, do that so that is just a little bit more of our tools that we're going to be using today oh turn that right on we know that it works and now let's get playing and have some fun We are working on our fireworks 4th of July necklace and we're going to start by creating the fun background and to do that we're going to use a tool instead of our um, stipple brush and I'm going to start out, we've warmed it up 
and I'm going to start with white first and apply white here and there on it because white um, is easier to get into other colors so let's start it first so we don't have to worry about it picking up other colors and don't forget to do the edges as well and I'm using my number two tool the smaller end and I'm going to go back and make these just a little bit bigger and everything here. You don't want to go over your wax when it's cool. You want to wait till it's completely cold. Otherwise, you're just kind of picking it up. There is no right or wrong on this. It's however you want to do it, however big you want to make your little sections. Alright, so I'm going to clean that tool off and I'm going to go to red. And you also can use the glitter crayons in this, it's kind of fun. That's okay, we'll just use that part there. If you're dripping too much, you've filled your well up too full with your color. Some colors drip more than others. Remember, we only use Crayola crayons. We don't use any other kind. They're thicker and they're more colorful. If you've ever colored with any others, you'll know the difference. And if I haven't mentioned it, there's also a great video on my YouTube site that's the basics of the wax design that walks through a lot of great information as well. Okay, I think we're pretty good with that. So we're going to go to our blue. And another reason that I didn't use the stipple brush to put it on with is it goes on thicker this way than it does. And we kind of want to keep this thicker because we're going to kind of move it around a little bit. And the more you want to mix it up, the more you would use the smaller sections. If you don't want it quite as mixed, then use some larger sections of color. The blue is a blue with a little bit of white added to it. And it doesn't matter because it's all going to get moved around a little bit. We're going to blow it around a little bit. So it's not a big deal. Put a little bit over the edge there and a little bit there just to bring some of that in. Okay, so we're going to go over and start melting it. And we're going to start by melting it along the edges first. Because the middle will heat up the fastest. So let's start with the outside edges. And I've got my heat gun pretty high up, but I could actually bring it down a little bit lower. Or if you like to keep it up higher so it doesn't melt as easy, you can lift your piece up underneath your paper towel, too. Just by bringing it up like that. And we're going to kind of move our colors around a bit. You can do it by blowing them with the wax, or you can also do it by heating your tool up and just moving them around a little bit. Now, don't do it too much because you don't want to dirty it up, and it will. It'll start to get really kind of dirty looking if you mix the colors too much, muddy looking. 
is how we would refer to it. So we've got that nice background right there. Now we're going to leave our heat gun really high up because we want to bring our tool in and do our fireworks. When we're working on fireworks, you want to think about them not being a round circle. Uh, we're going to kind of bring them in and we're going to curve them a little bit as well to kind of give them the illusion that they're falling from the sky. And this is my silver here that I'm going to be using. And so kind of think about an, an oval shape more or less when you're doing it. We want to heat this up till it's just warm enough. We don't want it too warm because then it the um, color that we're putting in will expand more. So we want to kind of have it a little bit warm. And it's got to be movable. Now see that's a little bit warmer than I would like it. Uh -huh, and it shrunk down. And but you need it workable. So if you have to warm it up again, that's okay. And if you want to do this in another color, feel free to do it in another color. There's also a really good metallic purple that's almost a black. It's called Deep Space. And this is too dry because you can see that I moved the wax. So we're going to warm it up just a little bit right that area. And there we go. Okay. And you can go back over those if you need to, if you lost some of that. And you also can come in here and kind of do some dots so that it looks like it's falling. And you don't have to do it completely around. I'm just going to kind of do it where I think the bottom of it would be. That way it looks like it's falling from the sky. Okay. And I'm going to heat it just a tad in the middle. We're going to put some glitter in it. We just want to barely warm that enough just to accept the glitter. And I'm going to use my Prisma glitter. And I want a bunch in the middle. And you can even put some on the outside just a little bit. But you want that in the center especially to look like it ex is exploding from that. And Let's just put a little bit more heat right on that so we make sure that stays. All right, so we've got that all in there really nice. And again, if you want another color that stands out a little bit more, you know, like we talked about, use the darker color. And or also use a little bit more white in the background. I had a little bit more white in this background, and I think it showed up a lot nicer than so many multicolor in the background here. So we're going to let that cool off and then once it's cooled off we're going to apply our Maj Paj Dimensional Magic and it's real important it says Dimensional Magic. This is made to go over the um, jewelry that they're doing with the paper and glass and different things like that. It's made to look like a glass setting. So it's supposed to go on nice and thick. Now unfortunately most of our gourds are not completely flat so we have um, to have put it on in layers but we want to put it on in nice thick layers and do three to five coats minimum and if it's going in the sun I would always check it always test your product it doesn't matter and make sure that you have that nice on, on thick on top. So the first thing we're going to do before we do that is we're going to make sure that we have removed any of our wax on the sides. And we don't seem to have as much on this one. We must not have blown this guy around a lot. 
because you don't want to seal your sides and you want to make sure that you get that um, nice and clean off there and then we're going to come back in and we're going to go up on the edge just a tad all the way around so when our sealer goes on top we get a nice good seal okay and remove any of that you don't want to have any of that over the top of it Move that glitter back to the middle a little bit. Some of that escaped a little bit more and I'd like it. That's okay, it's a firework. So we're going to take our Dimensional Magic and I'm going to put some around the edge first. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring that over just a tad on the edge to make sure that we get this seal all the way around. Nice and good. So that it holds that wax in if it would happen to get warm. You want to have that seal. You're not coming down the whole side, just a little part of it. Now, remember how we said it's better to have too much than not enough, and our brush is just kind of used to spread it around. It's not really brushing it on. You're just kind of applying it everywhere. You don't want to see brush strokes. So we're just trying to kind of even everything that we have on here kind of all nice and even out. You don't want it dripping down the sides and you don't want to overwork it. And when you put your pro your brush apart across, excuse me, you'll notice that it just kind of gels back down and that's exactly what you want that to do. And you want to just see that nice and smooth surface. If you see your brush strokes go back and put more on, it is not thick enough and you want to make sure that you have that nice and thick. Okay, so once you get your uh, couple of, of coats on that, three to five coats of that, then let it dry three hours. You want to make sure it's nice and dry, and then we'll put our necklace part on. Okay, now that we've finished decorating our jewelry piece, and we have removed the wax off the sides with our hobby knife, and we put five coats of the Maj Paj on, the Dimensional Magic, and it is dry, we're going to come in with our black acrylic paint and just paint the sides and the back all nice and neat. And if you get any of the paint up here, just wipe it off because you've already got your sealer on, so that'll just wipe off. Now make sure if you've used your Dimensional Magic, it's been three hours and that it's nice and dry. We don't want that um, wet and your fingerprints in there. And we're going to talk some more about different things that you can use other than what I am using. Um, in this, I'm going to use the basic black suede strip and the reason I use black in the backgrounds is it's a fade color so the design and the piece stands out and the sides don't distract from your design or the front part so that is a reason that I use the black now there's lots of other colors that you could use and decide that you would rather do instead of the black like on the red flower paint the sides red and then put your leather red leather piece over that to bring out the red and the flower that's fine you have all kinds of things this is some little silk pieces that i have found you could put those around there i've used some i've turned them into a braid you could put a braided piece around there to bring that out as all kinds of different stuff. I found some little tiny Hawaiian beads that I thought if you had the right piece those would look fun. But you've got all kinds of thread and yarn and just different accents that you can use. Don't get stuck on just what I'm showing you today. I always tell you to think outside the box. Well think outside the gourd piece here. I have some silver wire that you could use as well as some stained glass siding that's sticky that you could put on the sides. So there's all kinds of things that you could do with it. One of my favorites for this piece was a braided uh, suede piece around that 
and how neat that makes that look. But like I said, we're going to stick with the black basic for now because it helps the pattern stand out in the background. And if you've done the beading video, there is one thing that we're going to do different. And we're going to move the uh, suede piece towards the front so it's flush with the front of our piece. So we have painted in black. It's nice and dry. I'm going to put a tad of tacky glue on to start it and on this one I'm going to decide where my top of my gourd piece is going to be and I'm going to stop and finish start and finish there and that is so I can also get my eye screw in between those two pieces now I'm going to set it down flush I'm going to use an awl and I'm going to stick that all right in the middle of that piece on the end. And with the all, you want it to go about a fourth of an inch down because the sequin pins that we're going to be using are half inch. I'll throw a couple of those out there. And if you do it right, you should only need two of these. And some gourd pieces are tougher than others, and some are soft, softer. And this guy is going to be a booger. He is nice and hard. Let's see, and I leave my finger right there, so hopefully I can kind of have an idea where that hole is, and I can sink my nail into that hole without it being too hard. And I'm going to try moving him just a tad here because he is not playing with me today. There we go. And I have tried all different ways to do this with the hammer and all kinds of things. And you, the awl is the easiest way. You only want to put it halfway down so your sequin can push in halfway so it holds nice and secure. You don't want to um, push it all the way. Otherwise, your sequin won't have anything to push into. Now, instead of hammering or doing anything, I found it was just easier to push the pin straight in and if it bends take your pliers and pull it out. You don't want to go any further and you want to make sure that this pin is not going towards the front. You don't want it to go through your design. You'd rather go down or towards the back. If it comes through anywhere you'd rather it came through the back. We're going to try one more time. Nice and slow just pushing that straight in. This is a hard gourd. And it's kind of nice so you know that it happens to me as well. So we're going to leave this one in here. Tried one more time with my awl. And we're going to push that straight down. Don't let it go to the side. The thimble is important. It's a non-slip thimble so that you cannot slip around and that really helps out. Okay, so we finally got that guy in there. And I like to leave that in there because if I have problems, you're going to have problems once in a while. And we don't want to have this too messy. We don't want it on top of our leather because we're not covering up our leather. Our leather is our final piece. I'll bring that all the way around. And when I lay my tacky glue down, I always have it on the side instead of straight up and down so I don't have to shake it and get that air bubble out before I grab it. So we're just going to put this on and we wanted it flush with the front so I'm just kind of moving that around. And we're going to bump up right up next to this going to put, you're not going over the top of it, but you're going right next to where we did the first one. And 
and we're going to see if this guy will go in a little bit easier. Push him in nice and slow, straight up and down. This one's been a booger. And if he bends, we know we're going to pull. I'm going to grab my pliers here. this guy out and that's why we put extra pins in your kit and usually I do not have this hard of a time this is just a tougher piece just like you have soft gourds and hard gourds it's the same thing with this I'm going to try to put the hole in again a little bit further down Like I said, it's a good thing to do these on these videos because then you know when you do it, you're not thinking how easy it was. And usually it goes in much easier. I usually do not have this hard of a time at all. And then I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to trim this off. You still want the two pieces kind of meeting right there. Okay. And remove any of this glue from the front. You do not want any of this showing kind of make sure it's on the edge and what this does is just frames your piece that much nicer now where these two pieces touched I'm actually going to come in between those two and I'll punch another hole and actually I'm not going to I'm going to punch this one because it's thicker right behind it. But if it's not thicker, it's thinner, just put it right down the middle of your piece right there. Because when you go to, to turn it, your, your pieces are broken right there, so you're not turning them as much. So we're going to put our awl in there again. And we're going to twist on our screw eye. This is the smallest ones you can find. I think this is like a 7 16th. It'll be in your kits. So now we have that on. And I dropped my necklace. And we're going to put our jump ring on. And I'm going to open the jump ring up. I'm going to put it through the necklace, decide which way your clasp goes on your necklace so that you have that the right direction and then put your pendant part on and then you're going to squeeze it shut and you want no space between that. Now it's a bigger you don't have to worry about exactly but you never want when you're working with jump rings you never want them coming off so you want to make sure they're nice and tight So we want those meeting, and you can also squish them on there too, so that you know that they're nice and tight, right where they meet. And we have our necklace. Now, if you notice, the screw eye is facing this direction, so that your jump ring is facing this direction. Now, if you have any glue or stuff on the back like this, go back over and paint that up, and touch that up with your black acrylic paint. And you can also add part of the back on there. You can cut out the size of your circle and put a piece of material or leather on there just so that it's a little bit smoother on your, neck, on your um, necklace, if your, your skin, if you happen to be wearing it above your clothing. And if you like the piece with the beading on, we also have the beading technique, and that is on the Miriam Joy website, and that just really makes all of your stuff stand out, and there is a great video on how to do that step by step. And so we're just adding all kinds of dimension to your jewelry, 
and it's amazing just what Crayola crayon can do and how fantastic it looks. Nobody's going to believe that these are actually crayons. So thank you. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, please know that you can use the play the video in the YouTube again and again. You don't you're not limited to one time, and that there also are kits for each one of these. Hopefully, if you don't see anything up online, email me at art at miriamjoy.com or if you have any questions. And for any of the other projects, just visit my website at miriamjoy.com. Thank you. God bless and have fun.